Good morning, Our Savior's Church. Thank you for being with us here Sunday morning via live stream. We are grateful for the technology that enables us to come together. My name is Mark Chafee and I serve as the Church Council President here at Our Savior's. And I just wanted to welcome you and also just reiterate and remind uh, a couple announcements specifically towards next Sunday. Um, as you likely know, next Sunday, we are pleased to let you know that we will be gathering together inside here at Our Savior's for the first time in the past several months. We're gonna be having uh, church services in, uh, inside in the Our Savior's Community Life Center, right inside the gym um, here at Our Savior's. That'll be at 9 a.m. So that we can plan accordingly and be consistent with the guidelines set out in terms of you know, number of folks that we can have in the gym, we ask that you please reach out to the church office this week um, by Tuesday and just let us know if you're able to make the church service next um, Sunday morning tell us if you're coming and how many people in your family and that'll just be really super helpful to us in terms of setting up and so on the other thing we have going on next sunday as you likely know is that we're going to have a special voters assembly as we all know the call committee has been you know really working hard um, prayerfully and um, over the past 12 to 14 months on the call process and we are grateful for that and how great uh, and how god has led them and on Sunday, we're having a special voters assembly to hear a presentation from the call committee in terms of their recommendation for calling the next pastor. After their presentation and some question and answer, um, there will be a congregational vote uh, for us, the congregation, to decide if we um, will be extending a call to the pastor that they're recommending. Again, so that we can plan accordingly for that, could you please also let the church office know if you uh, plan on coming so that we know how many folks are coming and we can plan accordingly. So the same thing, just let the church office know by Tuesday if you can make that. If you also, in terms of the voters assembly, if you have any questions for the call committee between now and then, um, could you please just send those questions to the church office by Wednesday with the questions you have and that'll just be helpful to the call committee so that they can you know, be prepared and provide the answers, either you know, reach back out to the folks that have questions before then, or um, answer those questions as a part of the uh, voters assembly next Sunday. In addition, if you d expect that you can't make the voters assembly uh, next Sunday, um, there is still, a, we've put a process in place so that you can still um, vote, that you can cast your vote um, for that, for that um, decision. You may reach out to uh, Linda in the church office this week, uh, ask for an absentee ballot. We've got a process in place that she'll get you the ballot. We just ask that you return your ballot uh, no later than by the end of the day on Friday the 17th so, so that we can have all those in place. Contacts, I've mentioned a number of times here this morning that uh, you know, reach out to the church office. Uh, the phone number for the office, so we all have it, is 518-518. 459-2248, and email is oslofficeaol.com, office at aol.com, OSL office at aol.com. Lastly, and most importantly, in all these things, whether it's as a church, as we reopen the church, or the call process, or the pastor that God has in store for our saviors, please, please um, continue to lift all of this up in prayer. Uh, it's um, super important that we continue to do that, lift up our call committee, lift up this church as we um, you know, seek to reopen, and as we seek God's um, will for us as a church and for the next pastor. So thank you and have a blessed day. Dear friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us be silent before the Lord for a few seconds. And let us confess together most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, starting with the 10th verse. 
For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. A reading from Psalm 65. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God. The Holy Gospel is written in Matthew, chapter 13. On that day, after Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the lake. And such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat to sit while the whole crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. All their seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly because the soil was not deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient root, they withered. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundred times as much some 60 and some 30. The one who has ears had better listen. Then the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He replied, You have been given the opportunity to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but they have not. For whoever has will be given more and will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. For this reason I speak to them in parables. Although they see, they do not see, and although they hear, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And concerning them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will listen carefully, yet you will never understand. You will look closely, yet 
you will never comprehend. For the heart of this people has become dull. They are hard of hearing, and then they have shut their eyes so that they would not see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. But your eyes are blessed because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. So listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root in himself and, in himself and does not endure. When trouble comes, when trouble or persecution comes, because of the word, immediately he falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the person who hears the word, but worldly cares and seductiveness of wealth choke it, the word, so it produces nothing. But as for the seed sown on good soil, this is the person who hears the word and understands. He bears fruit, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. So far the gospel reading. We want to emphasize the words from the gospel, especially the one who has ears had better listen. So what's a parable? According to my Greek lexicon, a parable is a short discourse that makes a comparison. That's for our purposes. The meaning and purpose of parables was to convey a spiritual lesson in the life of the characters. One commentator noted there are 22 parables in the book of Matthew. Often, however, in addition to a short discourse making a comparison for our purposes, often a riddle or proverb or allegory is called a parable. An example of this is when Jesus quoted a, a, a popular saying, physician heal thyself. He quoted that in Luke. That in itself was called a parable. Physician, heal thyself. Pretty short. But for our purposes, again, especially in the Gospel of Matthew, these are stories or, or, or vignettes that uh, convey a deeper meaning. So the first, um, first one, some seeds that were sown with someone hearing about the kingdom those uh, seeds fell on the pathway and the birds ate it up. The seed didn't have a chance. It's just bird seed, really. And Jesus compares that soil, the hardened pathway, to a person that does not understand the message. Second, some of the seed fell on, shall fell on shallow soil that is on people's ears that probably did not believe it in the first place or he says they received it with joy, but there was no depth when the rubber hit the road for their lives. Thirdly, when a person does not act on what he, he or she hears because the person is too busy or too involved with his own stuff and his own life, that person is like seed on thorny soil, too much competition. And fourthly, we all know what happens with the good soil, the soil that is prepared, the soil that is ready to receive the word about the kingdom. It bears fruit for the kingdom. Now, I used to hate this parable, and I didn't know which one I was, and I'm thinking of all this kind of stuff, and I didn't understand it entirely. What, what, what's this mean, and what's that, and is it certain percentage on this, this kind of soil and another percentage on That's not the, 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 the question. Either we believe the word or we don't. But it seems like some people disbelieve for different reasons. And I'll just defer to Jesus' wisdom on this point. 
whatever reason they disbelieve. Notice I'm saying they, because hopefully it's not you and me. Anyway, I have a parable for you, a parable of sorts, and let's see what we think. Let's see if we believe it or it needs further explanation. Ready? Have you heard the latest news? The EPA is outlawing the sale of deodorants and the Department of Converse Conservation is linking up with Bill Gates and Microsoft to digitally monitor our shower heads in order to severely limit water usage. The effect will be that people will stink and we will all have to use face masks. Now, just so you don't get me wrong, I have to use a face mask like you and everybody else when I'm out in public. And I'm not telling you to not use a face mask in public. That's not the point of this little parable. The one who has ears had read a lesson. The first response in this little parable could be, I don't get it. I I'm not up on the news. Who's Bill Gates anyway? And of course, that might be a case of in the first response, mind versus the spirit, the hard pathway, the word is snatched. The second response, oh, I understand, <laughs> that's a good joke. Um, yeah, good point, um, but something's wrong here. I, um, I don't think it's, it's right to tell stinky jokes in church. So I'll just forget it. And that may be the case of easy believism, shallow soil. And the third response goes like this. There might be some truth to that, but I'm really too busy to, to check it out. And, and I, anyway, I have to go to work now. There's a saying that says, if you're too busy to pray, you're too busy. And be that the same for reading the scripture and spending time with the Lord. When Pastor Cain was here, we had a conversation after the, the service, and he noted that sometimes we'll spend 15 minutes in the Word and an hour with the news. Not good. The fourth response could be, and hopefully is, for this little parable and for the sower of the seed. I get it. It's a parody. It's a parable to show something. And in this case, to show government bureaucracy is controlling too much of our lives. It's a story to get us to think, to use our eyes and ears and brain to be aware of what is around us and what is happening in this world and witness to others when they are worried and afraid about these things that are in the news. The one who has ears to hear had better listen. And lest we throw the baby out with the bathwater, hear me out. Jesus is calling his church to attention. As I had mentioned another time, I've been studying and reading the book of Revelation for, for the uh, sermon messages and the have found out these uh, very similar words to what we, uh, Jesus says in the gospel. In the gospel, the one who has ears better listen. In the book of Revelation, seven times he says, Jesus says, the one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There's one Bible teacher who wisely calls the book of Revelation the grand central station of the Bible because everything comes together in this one book at the end of our Bible. Well, that's part two of today's sermon, finished. Part one? Oh, well, that's, that's a little shorter and a lot more pleasant. God, the sower, is very generous. 
He sows his seed liberally, scatters it all over the Word of God. And he sows it on the righteous and on the unrighteous, on those willing to receive and repent, and those on hard in their ways and too busy to listen, let alone follow up on what he has to say. And Jesus confirms this very thought in Matthew 5, in the Beatitudes, that our Heavenly Father, and I'm quoting, makes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. God is generous. God is liberal. Have you ever noticed how many apples on your tree or vegetables in your gardens do not get harvested, do not get eaten. There's an abundance. In the book of Leviticus, there's this wonderful passage where God says to let the soil rest for a year. <gasps> what are we going to eat? Well, especially in an agrarian economy, what are we going to eat? He says, don't plant anything. Just let everything grow by itself. You'll have enough food. And I'm quoting from Leviticus 25. I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year so that it will produce a crop sufficient for three years. When you sow in the eighth year, you shall eat the old until the ninth year when its crop arrives. Folks, read your Old Testament. It's Good for the soul. And what about the generosity of God in giving us His Son who lived among us and preached the word in season and out of season to borrow a phrase from St. Paul. Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. He Himself became that seed to be buried into the ground for three days and rise to new life so that we also might rise out of the grave to meet him on the last day. Hallelujah. Now, part three of today's message. That falls on, on you and me. How do we respond? A wise preacher pointed out that soils can't choose what they are and what they are like, hard or soft or thorny. They can't choose, but people can choose. We can choose. Luther says the Holy Spirit draws us by the gospel, enlightens us and sanctifies us. And we can choose to submit and how to respond. I urge you and me to take the warnings of Scripture seriously and receive the blessings of Scripture willingly. Once again from the book of Revelation, blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy aloud, and blessed are those who hear and obey the things written in it, because the time is near. And might that not apply to all of Scripture, all of the seed that God sows on us and for us? Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we would be taking up the offering, and since we are back inside again doing live stream, uh, that's not possible, but we encourage you to bring your offerings next week when we will hopefully be uh, together, whether inside or outside, <clears throat> and, uh, or you can mail them to the church office. So... Um, with that little announcement, I believe it's time to pray. I, um, I just want to mention that I may be a, a little melancholic this morning on account of my daughter-in-law being back in Albany Med, Albany Medical Center, and upon 
proper diagnosis now. They, they figured out what's wrong, the particular, particular mal malady. There being a certain fear of this autoimmune monster that she has been dealing with, but there, and, and there's not an, an agreement, there's, there's not an agreement how to treat it. So please pray for wisdom with me. Um, are we also praying for uh, stancosis? And uh, we want to continue to lift him up in your prayers. Father, as we continue in your word and look for Jesus' soon return and final redemption, we pray for our leaders, for those in authority over us, especially President Trump, our Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, and those who represent us in our requests in the halls of Congress, and those who uphold our laws in our courts. Father, give them your wisdom and strength and resolve to do your will. We pray for our state leaders, particularly and especially Governor Cuomo, those in our legislators, councils, courts. We pray for our local leaders, especially those uh, the mayors and executives governing our citizens and towns and our school boards and councils. And we pray for our church leaders, Derek and Mark, and for the servant shepherd we, we trust that you have chosen for our congregation. We pray for our elders, for our church council, for those in, in the church office serving, Tom Remke, then to Schwartz, then Greenwald, and John Belschwinder. We bless you, Father. Give our church leaders wisdom and strength and unity of spirit to carry out your great commission. And Father, we bless you for the health and life and joy and peace that we find in your word. We do pray for those who are sick and infirm. Let your spirit lead them. Let your spirit visit them. We also pray for those who are shut in and unable to go out, and particularly because of the pandemic that we are facing. To that end, we pray your life-giving, healing word would also enter Pam Reynolds, John Ronson, Sharon Shattuck, Gabrielle Wood, Larry Fold, Dave Williams, Len Peterson. And we pray that you would strengthen and empower Jennifer Bauer, Jason Alexander, Inger Glidden, Judy Dedis, Emily Hank. Lord Father, we pray that you would continue your grace towards those that are restricted in other ways. Ruth Luman, Joyce Brussel, Ethel Noe, Barbara Johnson, Mary Peterson, Hazel Goodkoska, Richard Goodkoska. All these petitions we ask for the sake of the blood of your Son, which even now pleads with us, pleads for us on your heavenly altar. And we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And finally, Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Star, 
Resurrection and life. 